We've all got used to seeing celebrity scandal in the newspapers. But the Profumo affair of 1963 was the first and the biggest and unleashed a new kind of tabloid journalism which is still with us today. June of 1963 was like a feeding frenzy of piranhas in Fleet Street. I mean, it, the, the, the excitement and the salaciousness uh, was with, absolutely without parallel. In the early 1960s, Britain was still emerging from the gloom of the Second World War. A new generation was helping to make London the hippest place to be. 21-year-old Christine Keeler was drawn to the city to work, but soon began to enjoy other benefits. She wasn't in any sense a sex worker. Um, what she was was a pioneer young woman of the 1960s who s slept with men when she wanted to and liked to have a good time. In 1963, the government minister for war, John Profumo, was a rising star of the House of Commons. He was a very rich, a handsome womanizer married to uh, quite a famous actress and film star called Valerie Hobson. Christine Keeler was working and socializing in swanky London nightclubs, and she met an eccentric osteopath, Stephen Ward, who offered her a place to live. Ward was also an artist, and that brought him into contact with many wealthy and important people, including politician John Profumo, known as Jack, to his friends. It was Ward who introduced Christine Keeler to Jack Profumo. Jack Perfumo and Christine Keeler met on a very hot summer evening by a swimming pool at Cliveden, which was Lord Astor's house on the Thames near Maidenhead. He got hold of her faux dumba and they had an affair which lasted, a, a casual affair that lasted perhaps a few weeks. Perfumo assumed nothing would come of the affair, but instead the fallout would lead to a national outcry. Christine Keeler was not the world's most discreet person and she also was really fatally rather trusting and spontaneous so she chattered um, about her affair with Perfumo in a casual way among her friends. It was only when Keeler had to give evidence in an unrelated court case that the world would discover her relationship with the Minister for War, Jack Perfumo. But even more revelations about Christine Keeler's private life would rock Britain. Once um, journalists started to come to her and offer her money for her story, she then begins to add the embellishment, the extra detail, that she had also had an affair with Ivanov, the Soviet Russian spy. It was the height of the Cold War. Tensions ran high with the Soviet Union. So the story of Christine Keeler conducting an affair with a government minister while also sleeping with a Russian spy called Captain Yevgeny Ivanov became global news. Jack Perfumo went to the House of Commons to make a personal statement exonerating himself from having been any sort of security risk. And in a fairly incidental way at the end of his statement, he, de in, it, it, he denied any sort of sexual relationship. But of course, he'd lied. And when the police began investigating, Perfumo knew the game was up. Jack Perfumo um, realized that he was going to be interviewed again. Uh, he has lost his nerve and he went to the Prime Minister and admitted that he had indeed had uh, a sexual affair with Christine Keeler two and a half years earlier. Profumo handed his resignation to Prime Minister Harold Macmillan and retreated from all political life. Christine Keeler became a household name, but the man who'd introduced her to Jack Profumo would pay a high price. Stephen Ward was investigated by the police and arrested by the police, essentially for, as a pimp, um, just because he'd introduced people at parties who got off after the parties together. He is put on trial, a really repulsive show trial. And although Ward is finally acquitted by the jury of many of the charges brought against him, he was convicted of two or three, but, but, um, 
but before he could be sentenced, he took a fatal overdose of sleeping tablets and died. The Profumo affair was the first tabloid expose of its kind, but it sold newspapers. So began the era of tabloid journalism that continues to this day. Coming up, the hacking of murdered schoolgirl Millie Dowlers. Tonight on 8 out of 10 cats, she'll work it out, Carol Vorderman, King of the Casio, David O'Doherty, and their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, nation's sweetheart, Peter Serafinowitz, cheeky scouser, John Bishop, and their team captain, Jason Manford. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion.